Hello, and welcome once again. It's been a while since I've put tablet to pen, and uh, today, since we are halfway through the year and we are counting down to reviewing for Regents examinations, let's start with reviewing one video at a time, one chapter at a time, and uh, Essentials of Geometry today. You follow along in your AMSCO textbook. I just want to clear a few things. This is you. Yes, the really bent, really, you need to seek a spine care doctor or something, and you are crying because this is some kind of brute teacher that is giving back your uh, final grades, and uh, you don't want that. Nope. Dot ABI. You don't want that. What we're going to do is we're just going to go over a bunch of things. Let's go over some terms of geometry. A set. What's a set? A set is just a collection of objects. And uh, a null set. Null set looks like this. Or an empty set It looks like this. But uh, that's when there isn't a set, but usually sets are written kind of like 0, 1, 2, dot, dot, dot. That's how sets are written. Next is a point. A point, just point P, like that. And a dot on a piece of paper. Um, no length, no width, no nothing. But uh, a line is a set of points. If you just uh, line up all those points, they go in this straight line and eventually you'll get to something that looks like that. And it's straight. And that is what we call a line. Series of points. Say that we have a point A here and a point B and we want to name this line. We can just call it line A, B like Also that. helpful is the term collinear. Well, what does that mean? Well, collinear just means a set of points, with all of which lie on the same straight line. So, say you have point A, point B, point C, and now you have this loner point D. You can say that A, B, and C are collinear, but B, C, D is not collinear because they all don't lie on the same line. So that's non-collinear. Um, compared with collinear. Okay, so I have a number line here, and my question to you is, what is the length of AB? Well, you would say, oh, I can just count because it's a number line, and it's 10. But uh, if you want to do it a scientific way, it's the absolute value of the difference of these two coordinates, and that's going to be your length. And what is that? 8 plus 2 absolute value of 10 that is 10 now what's a line segment a line segment has two endpoints here it's M and J and then it's all those points between those endpoints and that's a line segment and usually you can just write it like MJ or you can put a line through it if you want to and the length of a line segment is the difference of the measure between its endpoints. Now, what's a ray? A ray has only one endpoint, and we'll call this endpoint R. And let's say there's this point T over here, too, because we need a point here. And then an ray is just an endpoint, and all of the points after that point on a line. So this right here, all of this and that, that is a ray. Angles are only one step up from that. Angles are two rays that share a common vertex at R and say this was T that we were talking about earlier and this is S. You can call this angle TRS, you can call this angle R, you can call this angle SRT, but uh, R always has to be in the middle of there because it's the vertex. I'm actually cooking tilapia in the stove right now so I have to check every once in a while to make sure it doesn't like 
burned to death or something? So there are different kinds of angles. This is a straight angle. This is a right angle. Uh, and then there's angles that are less than 90, and those are acute. And then there's angles that are greater than 90, and those are obtuse. Fat angles. And then there's something called a bisector, an angle bisector. And this is just a ray jutting out from another angle that divides the angle into two congruent angles. So this is congruent to that. Okay, interesting enough. Perpendicular lines are lines that join together and intersect and they form uh, right angles. And, uh, and then there's... Oh my god, that is not even a triangle. Okay, this is a triangle right here, and this is a triangle, and it has three sides, and it's a polygon. And that's why we call it a triangle. Now, this triangle is also a scalene triangle, and scalene means that there are no congruent sides to this. What is this also? It's also a right triangle, because I just made this right angle over here, and that means, and if the triangle is one right angle, that means it's called a right triangle. Okay. There's also equiangular triangles where it's just all the same here. Every angle is the same. And equiangular, uh, equilateral triangles, they're all equiangular too. And then there's isosceles triangles that look kind of like this. And there's only two sides, but the third side isn't congruent to the other two sides. And then there's obtuse triangles, which may or may not be isosceles, but there's isosceles because whatever, I just made it. And one of these obtuse triangles have an angle greater than, greater than 90 degrees. How do I even draw the greater than symbol? Greater than 90 degrees. So, uh... If that's that's an obtuse triangle, am I missing anything here? Oh yeah, an acute triangle. This is also an acute triangle because all of these are 60, 60, 60. And if all the angles are less than 90 degrees, then yep, it's an acute triangle. There we go, triangles, okay, yeah. But now we got properties of a number system. This is important stuff that you must memorize. First of all is the commutative property. Oh my god, if A plus B, then you can flip it around and B plus A. Associative property is uh, you can just uh, flip the parentheses on anything if you want to. Exhibit A and exhibit B right there. You can just flip those parentheses around. Identity property of addition, add zero to any number, um, it equals the same number. Similarly, multiply any number by one, same number, yeah. Inverse property, add any number and then it's opposite, or it's negative, it equals zero. And uh, similarly, part of the multiplication property, as long as a does not equal zero, a times its reciprocal equals 1. Always. Okay. Let's do some more properties. We got this. Distributive property. Oh my god. A times B plus C is equal to AB plus AC. We definitely did not know that. There's also the multiplication property of 0. And that states that AB is equal to 0 if either A or b is equal to zero. O b equals zero. Okay. And that's all you really need to know. I mean, uh, that was not even hard. But uh, just in case you forgot some of those properties or you wanted a refresher on chapter one, there we go. And uh, that's a really bad smiley face. I'm going to erase his eyes. He's blind. Uh, pick your poison. Um, 
I don't even know what this is. Just, just, just go ahead and pick your poison. Um, like the video if you did, because if you do like it, it helps spread across YouTube. Because the more likes you have, the more it comes up in the search. And then just, just, just like it, okay? Bye. <laughs>